kind of the same same process here as we uh, start in on the soybean staging. Um, uh, so I've got the um, references again. This time, um, these are this set of references is again set up um, to match um, with the soybean side of it. Again, I've highlighted out the uh, soybean staging and key growth staging. A couple um, one pagers or two pagers there. Um, that do a, a pretty good job of helping walk through uh, staging and some of the keys that we're looking for and reasons why we want um, to, to hit on those growth stages. Um, so as we jump into uh, soybean staging, um, the key here, it, there are some, some distinct differences between soybean staging and corn staging. Obviously, we're looking at different plants, um, but the staging systems are um, a little bit different as well. So on the, the vegetative staging, uh, we start with the VE stage or the emergent stage, and then we move into the VC stage um, where we're looking um, at unrolled unifoliate leaves. And then we go into V1, uh, which is our first unrolled trifoliate leaf, V2, the second uh, unrolled trifoliate leaf, and then we continue on um, we can actually continue on with vegetative staging clear out. Uh, in Iowa, we can usually do this into the, the second, uh, maybe even the third week of August, uh, where we're still getting some uh, nodal, uh, nodes on the main stem that are initiating out uh, new leaves. So the, the vegetative stages um, are different from corn in the sense that uh, we have this VC stage um, so we go from V in corn, we go from VE to V1, and soybeans we have the VE, VC, V1, and then we continue on. Um, the reproductive stages in um, soybean are, are different as well. Um, obviously, we're looking at different um, plant parts um, than corn, but remember in corn we had six stages, in soybean we have eight reproductive stages. Um, the easy way to look at this is that they are always um, paired up. And so R1 and R2 are beginning in full bloom. R3 and R4, we're looking at pod develop beginning in full. R5 and 6 is uh, seed or seed fill with beginning in full. And then R7 and R8 is the beginning in full uh, maturity stage. So there is a slight uh, change there. So they're always paired up. Um, and and we ha we go from you know R1 clear out to R8 with soybeans. Um, and another key thing to consider as we're staging soybeans, and I've already uh, alluded to this a little bit, is that um, the soybeans that we're growing in Iowa and really quite honestly most of the Midwest, uh, you have to get down into um, the the southern U.S. Um, soybean growing regions where you start to find the determinant varieties. But in, in Iowa and the Midwest, we're growing indeterminate varieties. Um, this simply means that we can have an overlap of our vegetative and our reproductive growth and development, okay? So um, unlike corn where we go from vegetative growth and development to reproductive growth and development, um, soybeans, we're gonna have an overlap of that. Um, and so the key thing um, to be remembering there is that typically, um, again, paying attention to your herbicide labels because um, they're really going to give you some direction. Are, are you looking at plant height? Are you looking at the vegetative stage? Or do you need to be considering the, the reproductive stage in there? Um, so, so pay attention to that as you go through it. Um, but what that also means is that we can have vegetative growth after um, we have flowering beginning. And so... Um, the the diagram here has flowering and days the the x-axis is days after flowering right and so we can have flowering begin and we will we will still have vegetative growth um, for roughly another 30 days um, or so um, and then that flowering time period again is is more than just the beginning and full flowering we will have flowering continuing into um, that pod development um, stage. Um, and usually by the time we start seed filling, um, we're about done with the flowering um, stage. And then again, there's an overlap um, with pod development and seed filling. So this is a, a unique characteristic um, 
you know, distinguishing um, the, the growth habits of corn and soybeans. This is one of the main reasons, not the only reason, but one of the main reasons why um, soybeans have the ability to compensate for um, stresses, has the ability to compensate um, for um, whether it has um, neighbors close to it, you know, to the, the individual plant or far away is because they can put on and, and adjust the flowers, the pods, um, going clear into um, that R6 um, stage, so the, the full seed fill stage. So that's uh, a, a key thing to keep in mind um, as, as you look at it. So moving into um, the staging of soybeans, our first thing here is to really keep in mind that um, our emergent stage is our first stage. Um, so what we're looking at here is when the hypocotyl, um, which is the stem, um, or the edge of those cotyledons break the soil surface. Okay, and so really what's happening is that the hypocotyl, as it is uh, growing and elongating, it's basically pulling those cotyledons out of the ground. Okay, and so a lot of times you will see the crook of the hypocotyl uh, break the soil surface before the cotyledons do. So that's again when we would consider that we have um, at least started emergence um, moving forward there. Um, and then the, the next stage is the VC stage. And so when we get to this VC stage, we are identifying the unifoliate leaves. And so this picture does a, a good job of showing the, the cotyledons down at the bottom. Um, they're there, and then our unifoliate leaves are going to come out or um, be a pair on the plant. So you're going to have one unifoliate on opposite sides of the plant. And so when those unifoliate leaves uh, no longer have the leaf, leaf margins touching, um, that's when we would consider the plant to be at the VC stage. The Next stage is the V1 stage. And here what we're looking for is we're looking for uh, the trifoliate leaves and the leaf margins of those um, trifoliates to no longer be touching. And so, again, looking in this picture here, you have the, the trifoliate leaf, you're gonna have one petiole, which in this picture, the petiole is off on the back side with three different leaflets uh, attached to it. And so that's the trifoliate leaf that we're looking for and then we're looking for those individual leaf margins to no longer be rolled up and, and touching. Uh, when, we, when they do get unrolled, that's when we say we're at that V1 stage. Um, the trifoliates are going to uh, be produced uh, one at a time, and they're gonna be on typically altering sides of that main stem, okay? So um, you'll, in this case, the, the first trifoliates on the backside of the, the stem the next trifoliate, you can see on the, the apical meristem, and you can just see the beginning of those leaflets um, will be on the front side of the stem. So then the, the V2 stage, uh, again, what we're looking at um, is um, identifying our, our trifoliates. And so in this picture here, our first set of trifoliates is, is out and fully developed. Our second set of trifoliates are not quite there, or if they are, it's, I, I'm just not seeing it from this leaf or from this angle. Um, so we're almost to a, a V2 stage here. Um, as we go into that V2 stage, um, we can start to see uh, nodules um, on the soybean roots. Um, and those nodules are a, a key thing to, to hone in on. Uh, especially if you're looking at uh, plants that uh, may be um, paler green or even a yellowish green uh, color, because that could be a sign of, of, of nitrogen deficiency. And then just looking to see if we have those nodules there is a, a key thing to check at that V2 uh, stage um, to see how that's going. Um, I did want to show uh, real quickly, if you take those nodules and if you slice them open, uh, with a, a clean pocket knife, um, you will see some coloration in there. Uh, and, and the red color is a good color or even a pink color um, because that is a sign that you have active um, fixation of nitrogen occurring. 
Okay, um, if you have a greenish color, a, a pale green color, you can maybe see a little bit of that on the edge of uh, this sliced open nodule there. Um, that green color would indicate that it is an inactive um, area of this nodule. If an entire nodule is that way, that would be a sign that it's probably not going to produce. Um, however, if it's a white nodule, it's just immature, um, and it will hopefully uh, turn into an actively producing nodule. Um, the darker the red, um, the more mature that is, and you will get to a, a deep red or a rust-colored um, red, and that's a sign that that uh, nodule is starting to senesce or to die off. Um, so some things that you can look for um, if you're concerned about um, the you know, a, a possible nitrogen deficiency occurring there. Um, V3 stage, um, so here we're uh, showing a plant, again, that's a little bit on the early side uh, for, well, no, this one is at V3. We got our, our first trifoliate, our second trifoliate's up at the top, and then our third trifoliate is uh, flipped there on the, on the side in the middle. And so we have our, our three trifoliates that are fully developed, our fourth one, um, is still rolled up there at the top of the apical meristem. Um, just wanted to point out that at V3, um, a lot of times you won't find the cotyledons and you will have um, those auxiliary buds at each of the junctures between the uh, petiole and the main stem. And so, um, like I talked about in corn, the growing points, you know, corn before V6 is at uh, the soil surface on soybeans, our growing point is this apical meristem, or our primary growing point is the apical meristem, but we have secondary growing points um, at, in these auxiliary buds um, that are at that juncture of the petiole and the main stem. So keeping an, an eye out for those as you start to look at um, uh, plant injury uh, may be a, a way to help diagnose that a little bit. Okay, so uh, another uh, poll here um, so should this plant have nodules present? Um, so the, the key here is, you know, what, basically what stage are we at? Um, and then um, should we have those nodules present or not at this stage? And I'm going to continue on here a little bit, but I will um, look at the polling response uh, as, as Warren pulls it up, and then we'll chat about that if, if we need to. So I'm going to jump from the vegetative stages now into the reproductive stages. And again, remember that these reproductive stages um, will start um, typically while we're still getting some active vegetative growth. And the other thing, again, to remember with the reproductive stages is that they're always, almost all, well, they are always paired up, right? So we have a beginning and a full for each of the, the pairings. So um, our R1 and our R2 stages are the bloom stages. Um, so what we're looking at uh, to consider the plants at R1 is that we're looking for one flower being open at any of the nodes on that plant. And so um, these, are, these flowers are gonna show up um, at the, the auxiliary buds. Um, a lot of times they do show up in the middle of the plant around the fourth, fifth, sixth, um, nodes um, there. Um, so that's where you're typically going to find uh, your first flowers is in the middle of the stem. And then at R2 stage, now we're looking at the top two nodes um, that are fully developed to see if we have an, uh, an open flower. Okay, so um, R1, anywhere on the main stem. R2, we're looking at the top two most fully developed nodes to see if we have flowers there to be considering to be able to consider it at a full flower stage. Then um, we have the pod stage. Um, again, we're looking at the top four nodes here. Um, so the, the key with the reproductive stages is to know which nodes you need to be looking for. So R3, when we have pods that are 3 16ths of an inch at one of the top four nodes on the main stem, and then R4, the, the full pod stage is when those pods are three quarters of an inch long at one of the top four nodes. And so, again, we're looking for those, the pods and the pod length to determine when we're at R3 and R4. I'm gonna skip that poll question and go to 
um, the beginning and full seed stage. Um, so the beginning and full seed stage, now we're looking at the seed in the pod. Um, and so you can definitely feel the seed size once you get out um, into the R6 stage, because you can you really see that that seed has filled up that pod cavity. And that's the indicator for R6 um, at, the, at one of the top four nodes. And then R5 is a little bit more tricky. Um, sometimes you can feel that bean. It's going to be a flat bean um, that we're looking for that's about an eighth of an inch long um, to be able to, to consider it at the uh, beginning seed stage. Um, sometimes you do have to use a knife and, and split open that pod to be able to, to see um, the actual bean in there to, to know uh, the size of it if you can't feel it. And then um, our beginning and our full maturity stages, so R7 and R8. Um, R7, we're looking for one pod on the main stem that has reached a uh, mature uh, color. And so by mature color, we're talking about um, it's, it's uh, got a brown or a tan color to it. Um, and so that's when we would consider it to be at the uh, full mature um, color is when we see that color change from green to light green to yellow to brown or, or a tan. Um, one Again, one pot anywhere on the main stem. And then R8, our full maturity, is when we have 95% of the pods that have reached that, that full mature color. Okay, so um, by the time we get out to R8, a lot of times the, the leaves have yellowed and the, the even have dropped off and, and have had petioles uh, drop off. And so typically, uh, once we get to R8, it will be a week, uh, probably a long week, so uh, you know, 10 to 14, 15 days maybe, um, and we could be um, at a moisture for the seed that we could really start harvesting. So, um, and so uh, just real quickly looking back at the, the poll question, um, it looks like a lot of people said no, um, or well, even evenly split it almost. Uh, we had 120 that said no and 92 um, that said yes. Um, so in that picture, um, we were at a, a, a full V1 working on V2. And so um, that would be about the time that we should start being able to see those. Uh, but depending on the soil environment um, and the, the air temperature and, and how rapid growth is occurring, we may or may not um, be seeing those uh, nodules yet. So in a way, that was a trick question um, because it, it's kind of right on the break point of when we might start to see those um, versus not be able to see them yet. Okay, so um, flipping back, if you wanted to get a screen capture of uh, the soybean development uh, stages here,